Hello everybody, this is Satya Malik from LearnOpenCV.com. In this tutorial, we are going to use deep learning for image classification. We are not going to go into the theory of deep learning, but uh, we are going to review a tool that allows you to tinker with deep learning and quickly get started. I'm going to assume you have no knowledge of deep learning at all. And for this task, we are going to use a tool by NVIDIA called Digits. Digits 3 uses deep learning frameworks, Cafe and Torch in the back end. It provides a web interface or a browser-based interface to manage data, to train a neural network, and uh, to visualize results. And it's beautiful. To get started with deep learning, you need access to a machine with a good GPU. For this tutorial, I have created an Amazon machine image or AMI so that you can quickly get access to a machine with digits loaded on it already on Amazon EC2. So you do need an EC2 account, and if you don't have one, you can quickly go to aws.amazon.com and register for one. After you register for AWS and log into your account, you will see a page that looks like this. Now from the drop-down menu here, make sure you select US West Oregon because that's the region where I have, I have shared my AMI. Select EC2. So we are inside EC2 now. On this page, click on AMI. And then make sure you have public images selected here from this drop-down menu. And on this drop-down menu, search for big vision dash digits. That's the name of my AMI and you will see uh, the AMI right here. Amazon machine image or AMIs are pre-configured machines and you can launch a copy of that machine. That copy is called an instance on Amazon. So we have selected this AMI and we are going to go to actions and launch. Before it can launch, it's going to ask you a few questions on what kind of machine do you want and stuff like that. The kind of machine that we want is a GPU instance. Now this GPU instance will have one GPU. You can also choose the four GPU version, which is G28X large. But for this tutorial, it is sufficient to use G2X. Let's go to next. On this page, most of the defaults are good. I usually change the subnet to something I always use, which is 2A. And it's not very essential for this tutorial, but if you use additional space uh, called volumes on Amazon later on, then you would need to use the right subnet. But it doesn't matter. You could choose anything for this tutorial. Now let's go to add storage. This AMI needs at least eight gigabytes, so we will choose something like 50 gigabytes. Let's uh, tag the instance. This is just a name and I'm going to call it big uh, vision test instance. Okay, let's configure the security group. So on this security group, you need to be able to SSH, which is fine. Add another rule. We'll add a custom TCP rule. The port is 80. Let's type port 80. This is a security risk that you're allowing anybody to, to come in here to your uh, machine. So we are going to change it to my IP, okay? And SSH also I can change it to my IP, okay? Now let's review and launch. Everything looks good on this page, so I'm ready to launch. Okay, so this is the final step. You will be asked to either create a new public and private key pair, or you can choose your own existing one. Let me just go through the process of creating a new one because a lot of users who are new will go through this process. Now create a key pair name, it doesn't matter what it is. I can just call it AWS or whatever you want to call it. I have downloaded it, it is called aws.pem. Let's launch instance. Okay, so we are all good. Let's look at what our instance looks like. Is it, it's still pending. Also notice that we have this public IP that has been assigned to this instance. 
and we will use this public IP once Digit has launched. We will also use this public IP to SSH into this machine. Okay, we are all set up. You can see that the machine is running. We can grab the public IP address. Let's first SSH into the machine. So we will do SSH minus I and AWS dot PEM. That was the uh, file I downloaded. And then Ubuntu, this is the username they put by default. And this is the public IP address of the machine. Okay, let's go in. Yes. Hmm. Okay. You can see that we had some problem with the uh, private key. It says that the permission is not right. So we need to do chmod 600 and change the permission. So now it is a more re restrictive permission and now it will work. Okay, good. Let's look into a data set of 17 flowers. This is obtained from Visual Geometry Group at Oxford. And you can see that there are 17 different flowers and the images for those flowers are in 17 different directories and the name of the directories are essentially the class names or the names of the flowers and if you just look at how many flowers are there in each group we can see that there are 80 flowers in each group out of these 80 we are going to use 60 for training and 20 for testing we this is our public ip let's go and check out what's there on our public ip address okay so this digits is already running on our public IP address. We need to create a data set. Let's get started. We are going to crop the images to transform them to 256 by 256 instead of uh, you know squashing the images. Again, as I said, 25% of the images were, are being used for testing and the rest are being used for training right here is the directory where we have this data set and so we are going to put it right there okay and we are going to call this data set 17 flowers what else let's try now digits will create this data set it's going to take just a few seconds and you can see that there are 60 images in each class for training and this is the testing database and in there there are 20 per class okay so now the data set has been created we can go back to digits come back here and explore the database what does it look like okay you can explore the data set by the class labels so bluebell these are the different images in our training set for buttercup these are the different images and so on Let's go back to digits. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to use this data set to train a neural network and classify uh, the 17 uh, flower data set, right? Build a classifier. Given a new image, it should be able to tell which of the 17 flowers the image belongs to. On our very first attempt, we are going to use the defaults. So 17 flowers, we know that the image size is 256 by 256. We are going to choose AlexNet for training a neural network. It's a neural network that won 2012 ImageNet challenge. Let's look at what does AlexNet look like, okay? And for that, you can pick AlexNet, go to custom, customize it, okay? And then click on visualize. And you will notice it will give you the structure of AlexNet. AlexNet essentially has five convolution layers and three fully connected layers. This is our network. Now let's just train. We have the data and we have the network. Let's just train and see how it uh, works. He, right here we are going to call this 17 flowers and since we are using AlexNet let's just call Alex. Okay and let's see what what we get. So the training has started. In here, you will notice this one has only one GPU. This uh, shows the utilization of the GPU right here. And our training has started. If we have 17 different classes, and if we pick a class uh, randomly, 
the chance is about 6%. We'll get it right 6%. It's essentially one by 17. But you can see that it has started doing better than 6%. It is, the network has started training and there are three different curves that you see in this graph. The first one, the orange one is called accuracy. It's essentially what is the accuracy of, of classification. And the loss, the loss is essentially the error loss on the training set. And this is the loss on the validation set or the test set. And we can see that gradually our network is training. I think this takes about five minutes to train, which is not very typical because this is a very small data set of about only 17 classes. Okay, our network has fully trained and it took about four minutes and 10 seconds to train. But if you look at the accuracy, it is 67%. Pretty good, but doesn't live up to the expectation of a neural net. The important thing to notice is that how little work we did to achieve this kind of accuracy. Now the question is, can we do better? Of course we can do better. The very first thing is that we can go back and use the AlexNet weights that were used in the original paper. And for that, we'll need to do a small amount of modification. So let's get started again. We'll use the same data set. We will pick AlexNet and we, will, we are going to customize it. So this is the network, but the weights associated with the network are uh, something that uh, we have already downloaded and it's freely available uh, in CAFE. So we are going to use one of these weights. Let's use So this is a pre-trained weight. What does a pre-trained model mean? It means that this model was trained for something else, but we are going to use the same weights for our neural network. Why does it even work? That's an interesting question, but it is beyond the scope of this tutorial. But what's important to note is that you can actually take this predefined AlexNet and make it work on your model. And you'll see how much improvement you get with very little work. Now, since we are using the weights, some predefined weights, we, we cannot train with a huge uh, learning rate. So we have to reduce the learning rate slightly. We are going to reduce it by 10%. The other change that we need to make is that the number of outputs is different. So this model was trained for thousand different categories, but we have only 17 different categories. So we need to make a very small change in our network. All we need to do is to change the name of the final layer. So the final layer is a fully connected layer. The name of the layer is FC8. Instead of FC8, we're just going to call it FC9. Wherever we see FC8, we are going to call it FC9. Let's see, wherever we see this, that looks great. Let's visualize the model and in the end, instead of FC8, we have this fully connected uh, layer, FC9. And let's call this 17 flowers Alex pre-trained. Now let's see how it goes. Now this is going to take some time, maybe 10, 20 minutes, but let's see what kind of progress we see. In a very few, in a very few minutes, we can see, oh wow, see how the accuracy shot up to about 77% in a single iteration. Wow, it's up there now, 86%. That's magical, that's absolutely magical. And we'll let it run, and I'm, I'm guessing that the accuracy we finally get will be easily above 90%. Okay, great, our training is complete. The final accuracy got was 91.25%, and that's great. That's great for essentially doing nothing. You can see that the curves are very well behaved. The training loss was falling and it pretty much fell. It would have gone to zero if we had let it train. And the validation loss uh, also came down substantially. Now let's see how this, this train model works on an image that it has never seen. So let me just grab this image of a daffodil the URL and right here on digits, 
you can put that URL in and say classify one. Okay, so with about 99% accuracy, it says that this image is that of a daffodil. And you can see what the convolution, various convolution layers are actually seeing. So there is this nice visualization, but to explain this, you will actually need to read more about deep learning and convolution neural networks. But once you have read that, you will be able to interpret these images and you'll be thankful that you have a very nice way to visualize intermediate results. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our blog at learnopencv.com where we have many other interesting tutorials for people interested in computer vision and machine learning. Thank you.